Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Seaside Lighthouse and I'm sipping on some peach tea and if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the, by the name of Patricia Nelson and I have this benefit for my Patreon members where they get to submit photos every now and again and I will select some of them to turn into YouTube painting tutorials and as a thank you I will send Patricia this painting that I did um, as as my gratitude <laughs> so I hope she likes it um, if you'd like to learn more about how you could also submit your photographs for me to turn into uh, instructional videos or if you'd like to learn more about the Patreon membership program, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, phthalo green, Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, which sometimes I call Rust, and Deep Yellow. And of course you can switch those up as well. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush and I will just call them out as I use them. Uh, if you're painting along with me, you may want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase things like a, the same exact kit that I'm using from this. It has the same size canvas, same type, same type of paint and brushes. So the kit is available, but you can also purchase things individually in my shop, such as my brushes. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas which in essence is gonna be our first layer to the sky and the water. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my smaller bristle brush to mix a couple of custom colors. The colors that I'm gonna be using in this step are blue, green, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom, I'm gonna call it teal, which is a bluish green color. And then I'm gonna be doing two different shades of gray that we'll be using in the painting process. So I have pre-mixed my colors down here on my palette so you can see um, where I'm headed. This is my light gray, dark gray, and my teal color. I'm gonna start with my dark gray here. How I got to that is just black and white. So I'm gonna take some, some of my black paint and add a little bit of my white paint. I do want this to be on the darker side. This is gonna be um, the base for uh, about half of my water and I want to have some good contrast in my water so I need it to be on the darker side and then what you can do is you can, if you've made enough or a good amount of this you can just move some over into another compartment or this is my light gray it's the same color combination only more white so much more white and just a dot of black and that'll give you a nice light gray color. You definitely wanna make sure that the light gray is lighter than the dark gray and it's also darker than white. So, we can, so we'll be able to use the contrast with this light gray um, in areas next to the white in order to give some good dimension in clouds and all kinds of other stuff that we're gonna be painting. 
So then I'm just gonna wash my uh, mixing tool and I'm gonna create my teal color. So this is my teal color in through here. How I achieved this is blue, green, and touch just a touch of white. So I'm gonna use a lot of my cobalt blue, a little bit of my phthalo green, because the phthalo green will be a little bit more powerful than the cobalt blue. And then I just added a teeny touch of white paint in it to help with the opacity so it's not, um, so I can have a softer kind of color going into the process. I don't want it too much lighter because again, I wanna work play with the contrast and this is gonna be a dominant color in my water as well um, that will help me to bring contrast. So once I've got those three colors, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my large paintbrush, my large bristle brush, and I'm gonna start by giving myself a couple of little markers where I want my sky to stop and my water to start. So I'm going to um, pick up just a little bit of my of my light gray on my brush and I'm gonna find myself about the halfway point on the left hand side of my canvas canvas which for me is somewhere about here and then I'm gonna go down about two two and a quarter inches so somewhere about here is where I'm making my my first mark then I can use my brush as a measuring tool to see how high I did it on that side and I can come over to the other side and make myself another little tick mark at about the same height I don't need it to go straight across at this point. This is just something that's gonna stop me from um, going any further. And I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush. I don't want that um, that gray on my brush to start. So just washing my brush. I had some blue in my cup, which is fine. <laughs> so I'm gonna start in my sky with my, um, with my teal, and I'm gonna have it going dark in this top right hand corner and then I'm going to get it to go just a little bit lighter and then as I work my way down towards that horizon that's when I'll be starting to pick up the light gray. So I'm going to start with my with my teal. This is going to be pretty darn dark and then I'm going to start picking up white with my teal in on my dirty brush in order to get it to go a little bit lighter as it goes away from this area in through here. I'm just using a left to right kind of crisscross type of motion um, to give myself a kind of a softness to it. You can go back and forth left to right. Um, we're gonna be having lots of clouds and stuff on top of this. So know that you have much more work to go so if you don't have it super smooth at this point don't worry this is just the base coat and again i kind of want it a little bit darker over here on the right hand side so i'm not putting too much white over in through there and on this left hand side picking up a little bit more white on my brush so it goes just a little bit lighter if you don't get this kind of gradient in the sky right now it's all right again we've got we've got lots of clouds and all kinds of fun stuff that are going to be um, put on top of this so now that i'm i'm about halfway down my sky i'm going to amp up the the lightness of it so i'm picking up more white on my brush so i can get it to go lighter and lighter as it's coming down uh, the sky and again it's on my dirty brush so you're still going to see some of that light bluish green um, or that light teal kind of working its way off of your brush as you come down in through here and as it's drying I just kind of give myself a nice little um, broad brush stroke to smooth it out a little bit a little bit more white and in a second I'm going to pick up that light gray to go right down towards that horizon. So this is about good. I've got maybe about two or three inches left. Now I'm picking up that light gray on my dirty brush and I'm going to go right down to my tick marks. So somewhere right in through here, just kind of going broad strokes across, connecting those two. And then I can get this light gray to just blend up into that sky. So I'm just kind of while it's still a little um, wet, the sky is still a little wet, uh, where that light blue was, I can just kind of work this up. And if you feel that you know it's not blended enough, again, this is just that first step. We don't need it to be perfect yet. And then once I've got this done, what I'm gonna do, I am going to wash and dry my brush, just kind of smoothing this out as much as I want it before I call it. <laughs> there we go. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and then I'm going to head on into my water. 
So what I'm going to do for my water is I'm going to be doing the dark gray predominantly on the left hand side and the uh, teal color on the right hand side. I'm going to start with the dark gray to just kind of get my horizon line in place and then I'll transition into the other two colors. So I wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my dark gray and I'm going to go across the horizon. It doesn't, again, have to be super perfect. There's going to be a little piece of land over here, and we're going to be putting a highlight later at the top of that horizon line. So again, this is just kind of getting you in place as to where you want it. So I'm just kind of going um, with broad brush strokes across. And again, not uber concerned right now if it's super perfectly straight. Sometimes when I go uh, on the quicker side, that helps me to um, get a softer, straighter line like that. And again, I'm just going for a little softness and there's a big piece of land over here that I can attend to later. And we've got highlights and clouds and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> so now I'm gonna pick up more of my gray and I'm coming down this left-hand side, but I'm gonna kind of break it up a little bit, um, almost bring it in a kind of a diagonal type of a section over here on the right-hand side, bring it, bringing it, I would say, to about down in through here. So just left and right is gonna give you this kind of jagged edge on the side. This left-hand side can be pretty solid with the color, so you can just kind of paint it all in over here in a solid way. And then as it's kind of uh, breaking this center plane area, you can um, just give it a, a jagged type of line. Now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm just gonna pick up that teal color and I'm gonna put that over on the right hand side and cross it over this little center gray section in through here. So with that teal on my brush, I'm just gonna kind of cross it over in through here so those two work together but are not there's not a straight line that um that separates them we just kind of getting them to talk to each other <laughs> and then i just keep picking up that teal color to finish off this right hand side and again just going back and forth left to right um kind of following through with my brush stroke, not stopping it, because if you kind of stop it, you'll get a funny, what I would refer to as like a cut mark. So I like to follow through, um, almost like lifting off the brush in a uh, kind of gentle fashion. I refer to it as following through as if you're bowling. <laughs> so bringing your brush stroke off that canvas will give you that nice kind of um, invisible, exit of your brush stroke and then you can if you have any little spots that are um, unpainted just kind of go back and forth lightly and get them and then we're going to be using this same brush stroke or the same the same brush stroke the same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is the second layer on the sky I'm using my large bristle brush. I do re recommend before you start the step that you make sure that it's dry because it'll be easier to paint this layer that way. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are white, light gray, and my, um, my teal color, and maybe a little bit of that dark gray as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process of where that sun is going to go in this photo reference that I'm using, the sun is really bright and then it's got like a light blue circle around it and then it's got gray type of cloud glow around it. So I'm going to be doing this in a layered type of process, but I'm going to be, um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of white in where the center of the sun is going to go and then we'll make a gradient out where that gray is and then we're going to use that light gray and maybe some white to put the um, thin clouds in the sky or, or lay them out and as well as there's a um, lots of atmospheric dimension down at the horizon line so we'll we'll put all of that in place and then we'll come back in a future step and put some details on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first start with just a tiny bit of white paint on my brush just a little bit on the corner of my brush 
the sun is in this vicinity. So if you find yourself the center of the top of your canvas and come down maybe about two inches and over about two inches, that's about where it, it starts. I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. So just a little bit will do you, and then just kind of move your brush around in a circular type of motion until, and get it larger and larger until you've got this really soft edge around um, that center. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my light gray while I have um, uh, still a little bit of white on my brush. I think I might actually pick up even more white right now to um, get just a little bit more connection between the center and the gray. So there we go. That works out better for me. You don't, if you see, still see a little bit of the light blue underneath it, that's totally fine at this point. Um, and then I'm going to just work this gray out in a kind of diffused way. So I'm going to just take my brush and almost scrub it out into the sky. So it has these really soft dissipated edges to it. If your paint dries too quickly on you and you need to um, get it to re-wet, you can always add a little bit more paint to your brush um, and or a touch of water. I would just be careful with um, the water if you're doing this scrubbing technique because sometimes that water can just lift that paint right off of the canvas and it makes it difficult to um, kind of reverse that action. Even if your paint is a little streaky, that's totally fine. Um, Cause again, we're gonna do another layer to this. So this is about the area of that gray kind of cloud. It also comes down a little bit to this left. So I'm gonna be leaving a little peekaboo spots of my sky kind of around the edges. But if you don't get those little peekaboo spots, don't worry about it. Again, we're gonna do one more kind of big pass on the sky. So that'll help us to, um, you know, get as much of that stuff in there as, as we want. So now that I've got that, I'm going to now start picking up a touch of white on my brush. And again, just a itty bitty bit. I'm going to use this to uh, have the start of these really wispy clouds that are coming out the, the over on these edges. You don't have to put them exactly in the same places that I'm putting them. I'm just kind of following the um, formation that I'm seeing in the photo reference. Again, I hardly have any paint on my brush. I did not wash my brush. I am uh, using a dirty brush at this point. So um, it will allow those colors to really kind of talk well together. I'm using a lot of this little scrubbing type of a technique. And again, we'll be doing uh, another layer to this in a little bit to make it look even better. If you're feeling like the white is too white and all of the light gray has worked its way off, then I do recommend either picking up a touch of your um, teal color or more of that light gray. So this will prevent you from going too white too fast. And again, just an itty bitty bit on your brush. Uh, I just wanna make sure I've got this place where I want it to be. I think it's right in through here. And again, just kind of, um, I'm just kind of watching my, my photo. There's these little tiny wispy clouds all over the sky, which is super cool. Makes for a really interesting um, and fun lesson in cloud making. <laughs> the control of still seeing um, that, that sky behind it is, is a great thing to test yourself on. And again, less is more, just a teeny tiny bit of paint on your brush. There's a little bit of um, it kind of coming down in through here. And then these clouds down at the bottom, we've kind of already got it started with this gray, with the um, light gray that we started in through here. But I wanna put a little bit more darkness down at this bottom and maybe a couple um, other spots. So I'm, I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of my dark gray. Uh, I don't, I'm scared it's gonna go too dark. So I'm dark gray and light gray on my brush right now. I want a pretty dark area in through here. I am going to be adding a little bit more of a color change in this area later, but with a little bit of a, of a yellowish type of a hue on top of it. But right now I just wanna get that, um, the tonal value where I want it to be sitting. So it's a little bit of my gray, my dark gray and my light gray. So that works out pretty well in through there. It's kind of a darker streak in the sky somewhere in through here. 
and then there's some darker clouds up in through here but we'll I'm just gonna put a little bit just a little bit in through here <laughs> I know I'm gonna be adding more later but this is this is looking pretty good here so now that's looking good to me what I'm gonna do I'm gonna um I, I want to just make sure all of my my blue sky behind is fully rendered um, before we move on to the next step on the sky. So this is where I'm going to pick up just a ton. I'm washing my brush. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of that teal with um, a touch of white on my brush. So a tiny bit of teal and a touch of white, just an itty bitty bit on my brush because I'm I'm seeing that there's a couple of areas that need a little bit more finessing. So I just want to make sure that I've I've got those and that I'm not worried about them later um, and that they just really look like they're fully painted and then once i've got this done i am going to be using uh this same brush for the next step uh yeah i'm going to use this brush and maybe my my um my small bristle brush as well so once you've got this done fiddle with it as much as you want again we're going to be um doing more detail to it and then wash this brush take out the small bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the sky. This will include the sun too. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, um, my light gray, yellow, burnt sienna, and my um, teal. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use my large brush, my large bristle brush and my small bristle brush because I know I'm going to want to use this in some small detailed clouds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting another layer on my sun so I can brighten up that center. And I want it to, again, still continue to dissipate into these clouds. I'm going to put some more atmospheric dimension down at the horizon because I want there to be some additional tones in this area down in through here so it kind of glows onto the water and then we'll be finishing out the clouds themselves with some um, more detail with the little uh, puffiness at the tops of the clouds and the little wispiness going through the sky. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of white paint. Again, just an itty bitty bit on my brush. I'm gonna start in this center. Now's the time where I can go pretty darn white in this center. So I'm just gonna kind of manipulate this around in a circle, keeping it pretty white in that center and then just allowing for it to um, kind of just fade out into that gray area. I'm gonna put a little blue glow around it in a, in a minute, but right now just looking to get that um, bright white in that center and then just kind of slowly <laughs> getting it to go out in a nice kind of circular type of shape. That looks pretty good to me. And then once I've got that, that looks pretty good. I might end up doing another layer on the inside of that um, sun once it dries, if it doesn't dry as bright as I want it. So again, just kind of uh, finessing it out into the, that gray area. While that's kind of drying and setting, I'm gonna come down into this little horizon area. I'm going to actually, on my dirty brush, so I have white, a tiny bit of white on my brush, I'm going to pick up a dot of yellow and a dot of burnt sienna. So again, just a teeny tiny dot of both plus my white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this right onto this gray area down at the horizon line. I think I want a little bit more burnt sienna and a touch more white on my brush. So a tiny bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of white. And I'm just proceeding with caution because I just want this to be kind of an airiness down at the bottom of the horizon. It looks like there might have been um, like the, the, the sun. It almost looks like it's kind of peeking back behind some clouds. I just picked up a touch of white and gray on my dirty brush just to uh, get this to blend out over in through here. This is, there's gonna be a little piece of land here, so this all just helps to um, get that stuff to talk together. That looks pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit more white and a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Looking like there's a little bit of extra cloud in through there. There we go, something like that. Totally works for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, wash my brush in case I had any of that burnt sienna still left on there and I'm going to go 
uh, back up to my sun. That's still very, very wet right there, so I don't want to um, work on that, but I need to work on the clouds around it. So I'm gonna go gray and white on my brush. So I have gray plus white. And this is where I'm gonna start to just kind of add these additional little fluffier clouds or brighter clouds throughout that gray area. So this is light gray and white on my brush right now. Again, I'm not pulling it all the way white, but I'm putting these little additional um, clouds uh, on top of that light gray area that um, we set as a base. And again, I'm just doing this to emulate what I'm seeing in the, in the photo. You could certainly have any unique cloud formation that is appealing to you. Uh, this one just, it was super airy and has lots of um, little depth to these thin clouds. So I thought it was really cool and it would be make for a good um, lesson on clouds. <laughs> clouds are one of those, those things that um, uh, can be quite, I don't want to say intimidating, but definitely there's so much to these little fluffy things that float in the sky. So getting as much practice as we can is always beneficial. So again, this is just the light gray plus a touch of white on my brush. I'm, I'm doing it in a smaller area or um, just intermingling it with the, the, um, the light gray that I had already done because I, I don't want to overpaint it. I don't want to take away all of that light gray that we had done. This is just in conjunction with it and it's um, a, another tonal value. So it's just a little bit lighter, which is why I'm using um, the white on my brush with the gray, with the light gray. So this is gonna, this adds that additional um, value to it and is also giving me those extra pieces of um, visible clouds throughout the sky. That's a pretty neat sky. <laughs> it's so fun because when I'm uh, emulating photographs, it's, it's just intriguing to me because I would never think of this type of cloud formation in my head. <laughs> it's, it's always something that I need to, you know, grab from Mother Nature and, and you know, use her thoughts instead of my thoughts because my, my brain would never conceive a cloud formation like this. My brain is too... Um, I guess not as creative as Mother Nature's brain is or something, but it's so cool to me when I start layering on these clouds and seeing how they can just form themselves in different ways. And, you know, it's interesting to me. So uh, white plus a little bit of gray. I'm seeing that there's some more clouds kind of in here that I, I didn't really capture the first time. So I'm just going to go in and, and put some additional ones in through here like that. And then we've got some really energetic ones over in through here that are going to have some, some darkness to them as well. Almost got this pass going and then we'll do some, some um, nice detailed ones. So again, I'm still just uh, picking up my light gray and white right now, giving myself these, um, these areas of additional um, pieces of clouds. And if you want more fluffiness, you can just kind of scrub that brush to give you those really airy pieces. So there's a bunch of um, like a section of low bubbly clouds, <laughs> low bubbly clouds down in through here. So I think before I finish up that sun, I'm going to switch brushes to my um, small bristle brush to get these in through here. I'm going to actually pick up a bit of my um, teal plus the light gray because I'm seeing some blue in some of these clouds. So I'm going to take this, there's um, see, there's a, like a little line of them in through here. So I'm kind of um, watching my photo and seeing where I'm seeing some of these blue-ish type of uh, clouds. That's kind of about it. Now I just wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up some of my gray in order to um, just kind of get this to, I think I want to go dark gray. I don't know if I said I was going to use dark gray, but I just picked up some dark gray because it feels like they go a little bit darker down in through here. And then I'm gonna pop on some, um, some white and some light gray, but there's really some darkness down in through here. And because I didn't wash my brush, I've got a little bit of that um, blue still coming off, the, the teal blue. We've got 
some little bits of darkness down in through here. That looks pretty good. We've got this darkness over here, and then there's a couple little dark streaks over here. And now I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I feel I have too much uh, gray and blue on it. So now I'm gonna pick up uh, white and my light gray. So white and my light gray, and I'm gonna start popping in um, these little tiny pops of the, the tops of the clouds in through here. So if, you're, if your paint um, underneath is still too wet for you to kind of do these, um, just these little, almost, I don't, I don't know what else to call them other than little bubble. <laughs> They're just little, little tiny bumps. Um, and if you seem to be blending it too much, you could certainly just give it a few minutes to let it dry. Um, it seems like there's a little bit in through here. Um, and then I've got a little section of it kind of coming down in through here. And they don't all have to be bright white, which is why I'm using um, the gray with it. You could even use a bit of the burnt sienna if you wanted to add little hues of additional colors in it, which I might do in a second because I'm feeling like um, this might be kind of a little bit too flat of a color. So I just, I'm picking up a little bit of burnt sienna as well with my white on my dirty brush, especially maybe in this little cloud. Yeah, that looks pretty. A little bit of, little bit of the burnt sienna on there just kind of gives you a little extra glow from that sun. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly as I'm doing it. I'm just kind of um, having fun <laughs> and doing these little tiny bits of clouds in through here. I don't want them to be overly blue, but still give you that, that essence. That's looking pretty neat. Um, and then I would just kind of fiddle with it. I might add a little bit more in through here, just a little bit of extra lightness. Um, but again, you can, oh, I need to hit that sun again too. So I'm gonna just kind of put a couple additional little layers in through here and then I wanna go and hit that sun one more time because we need to get that little blue glow around it. So that's looking pretty good. Boy, it's tough to stop clouds, especially when it's so interesting and intriguing as this cloud formation. <laughs> that looks, all right, I'm gonna call that bottom. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm, I'm actually gonna, um, use this smaller brush, this, this uh, bristle brush, the small bristle brush to finish this up because I don't want to overdo this area. So I'm gonna start back again. Uh, let me just see if that's dry enough for me. I'm gonna uh, wait to go back into that center, but I'm gonna pick up white plus a teeny tiny bit of the teal. So just a itty bitty bit of the teal. I don't want this to go super blue. So if you, you could even pre-mix yourself a little um, light blue color if you were nervous, but I'm gonna go outside in through here. Ooh, I need a little bit more blue. See, I was a little too cautious and it's um, it's a little bit too, too light. So I just picked up a little bit more of my, there we go, something like this will work. And it looks like it's just this really um, faint hue. I don't, I'm not quite sure how this is happening. Maybe it's it may, something is glowing in that sky that, or in this photo that's allowing for a little bit of this um, blue tone. I don't know if the photo was saturated, if the colors in the photo were saturated or what happened, but I don't know. It's super cool to me. <laughs> I just washed and dried my brush or washed it at, with, there's a, it's a little damp so I can just kind of pull this blue out just a little bit further. I'm going to wash and dry my brush again and go back into that center with some a little bit of extra white and then I will just get this white to kind of um, blend into this light blue. So in the photo the the sun does not appear a hundred percent circular. It looks like it kind of um, has a couple of little sun rays popping out so if you feel um, that you can or want to pull a couple of these little sun rays out feel free to do so. Um, it's not really necessary to do so, but if you're feeling like you want that extra little pop out of your sun, you can certainly just kind of pull out these bright little um, rays of light and then just fiddle with it. Let it dry, see if there's anything additional that you wanna do. And then once you've got it done, we are going to be using 
Um, we're gonna use the our large bristle brush for the next step. So you can put this one away, take out your large bristle, and if I can ever stop this, <laughs> get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer on the water. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my small bristle brush to pre-mix another custom color. So what I'm gonna be doing is I want to, in essence, kind of start the ripples in the water as well as the reflection of the sun, which is why this left-hand side of the water is gonna be um, less blue. <laughs> it's going to have, have lots of like a little bit of a faint yellow to it and very light versions of gray in it. Um, so I'd want to start that. And then the, the ripples in the water over on the right hand side are going to have more of a light blue type of a color, which will be made with my teal and white at the same time. But I want to pre-mix myself a light yellow type of a color. So this is it here. I don't want it to be super bright yellow. I would just very faint, um, kind of a dull yellow. So how I got to this and the colors that I'm gonna be using are yellow, burnt sienna, dark gray, and white. And then I will also in this step be using light gray and my teal as well. But for this um, color here, how I got to this is mostly yellow and white but I also added a touch of my dark gray and a touch of burnt sienna to it as well. So what I'm going for is kind of this light muted type of yellow color. It might even have a hint of a little bit of a greenish type of hue to it at this point, which I'm okay with. Um, I actually kind of want that <laughs> for the glow on top of the water and you'll see how much it um, has an effect as it shimmers on that on that water so this is the color that I'm going for here so once I've got that in place what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my large brush and I'm going to pick up some of my light gray this is how I'm going to start my um, my water area so I have light gray on my brush and I'm going to do just a quick line up at the um, up at the horizon line so something like this and again it doesn't have to be super duper straight and I don't need a solid color either so this is because there's lots of variations or tones in that water so I don't need a solid color the land is going to cross over this piece of water in through here so you don't even need to um, bring that all the way down but I do need a little bit of lightness um, in through there. So once I've got that, I'm going to pick up more of that light gray and I'm going to be um, using this in a, uh, I'm hardly touching my canvas. So what I'm doing is just kind of putting uh, little marks of the light gray throughout the water in order to set the the tone of the of the little ripply waves. So I'm just kind of taking the light gray. You can still see all of the other colors underneath it, almost just kind of tapping it and rubbing it back and forth left to right, which is giving me another um, additional colors in that water. The water is gonna start showing some, some additional ripples over in through here. So I'm gonna start um, almost pulling it in a, type of a diagonal type of uh, way in order to give the viewer the understanding of where those ripples are. Over here they kind of um, go in this manner. So because I'm using hardly any paint on my brush, what this is doing is it's just allowing for me to kind of put in place the direction that I'm seeing those um, ripples in the water and it's allowing for me to start that um, textural element of the of the of the ripples in the water down in through here these are where they kind of come bigger at the viewer so I'm using a more broad stroke to kind of get some of these in place and through here I get but again broader stroke but hardly any paint on my brush they kind of work their way around the the lighthouse um, 
uh, structure, that lamb structure, which is why it looks like they're kind of um, going in different directions. So we're just going to kind of get these in place like this. That just kind of tells me what's happening with the um, ripples in the waves. And then over here, there's not, I can't really detect the direction of the wave. So I'm just kind of kind of brush that on like that. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do without washing my brush is I'm picking up some of that light yellow color that I created. I'm going to put this up at this horizon line right up in through here. And I'm also in a minute going to pick up some white to introduce with this. So this is on here. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white on my brush, just an itty bitty bit to give myself a little bit lighter value up in through here. And I can certainly, once this is um, put in place, I might say, mm, I think I need to adjust that horizon line a little bit. And I can certainly um, do that whenever, whenever I need to. And then I'm going to pull this um, light yellow down a little bit into the water, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. So I'm going to put a little bit up in through here. And now I'm going to pick up my light gray on my dirty brush. So I have the remnants of the yellow plus a little bit of light gray on my brush in through here. And again, just kind of intermingling these two and just going to bring it down very subtly in the water in through here. Something like this. And I can detect a tiny bit of that light yellow almost coming down pretty far in the water. So I'm just going to um, sprinkle it in like this, let it kind of dissipate off of my brush over in this direction. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my light gray to get um, some lighter spots in through here. We're going to put some final um, sparkles and stuff like that in the water um, as as we bring it to a close. But right now, again, I'm just getting every this is my I'm considering this to be my second layer of my water, just kind of laying out where those um, where those ripples are going to be and kind of the color pattern that I feel that I'm seeing in the water. So I got some lighter areas down and through here again, just kind of tapping my brush, watching where um, I want some of those light areas to be. And then over on this side, I'm going to uh, wash. Uh, do I want to wash my brush? Yeah, I'm going to wash my brush. I feel like I want to use a little bit of that teal um, and a touch of white to get um, some lighter um, representation over on this side, kind of like we have the yellow over there. So I'm going to go a uh, tiny bit of teal and a tiny bit of white. If I can find some clean white, there we go. Tiny bit of teal and a tiny bit of white on my brush. So this will be um, maybe underneath where that land is going to go. This will be a little bit brighter in through here. And then I can kind of just pop a little bit in this just in the same direction that I've already um, kind of established these uh, little ripples of the waves to go. So again, this is my teal plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint. And again, just kind of already established where um, the direction of some of these are going, but I want to have this lighter, brighter version of that teal color in there as well. So we can really um, show the reflections of that sky. This is pretty good in through here. And then I think I'm going to kind of do this, just kind of pop it in a little bit in through here in the same direction. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I think uh, maybe just a little bit more in through here. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do, I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done to this stage, you can uh, wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the water. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of fine tuning later around our lighthouse, but right now we're just gonna do the main part of the water. I'm using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna use a bunch of colors here. I'm gonna be using my light yellow. I'm gonna also be using probably a little bit of black burnt sienna um, my, uh, teal and maybe a little dark and light gray and some white, <laughs> so, a lot of colors, probably 
almost all of them. So what I really wanna do here is I wanna add some extra sparkle to my water around here. I'm also gonna be using, I'm seeing like a little brownish, reddish kind of hue around the reflection of the sun also. So I'm gonna be putting in a little bit of maybe some burnt sienna and um, little black speckly marks within um, the water to give it a lot of dimension over on this left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I do need these two to cross over each other a little bit better, so I'll be doing a little bit more um, where they cross over. And then on the right-hand side, I'm just going to maybe put in um, a few more lighter uh, marks for the water to have it shining a little bit more and then we'll be done. <laughs> Easy peasy. So what I'm going to first do, I want to put my dark um, little speckly marks in place on both sides so I can have some great depth and then we'll add all the little sparkly marks. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of black. So just itty bitty bit of both on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take and I'm going to just kind of dabble this in, kind of speckling it along these um, edges. Again, I just have a teeny tiny bit of burnt sienna and, um, and black on my brush. And I'm really just doing this in order to get some extra dimension in that water. So it has that, that depth to it that... I feel I'm seeing in the in the photo. I just picked up a little bit more burnt sienna. Um, I'm feeling like I've got uh, some down in through here, and then all the way up in this area over here, I've got what appears to me to be kind of like um, a burnt sienna type of tones to it. I know I'm using that kind of loosely, but um, because it, I, I'm seeing kind of like a, a, a reddish type of tone. So to me, um, for me to be using a little bit of the burnt sienna as representation of that tone, um, it works out just fine for me. So right now I'm kind of rubbing it a little bit more just so I can get um, a little bit softer appearance to it. That looks pretty good in through there. Now I'm gonna pick up, um, without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that light yellow plus a touch of white on my brush, and I'm gonna start um, giving myself some light uh, marks up at the top of this horizon in through here, nice and light with the light yellow and the white. And then as I come down, oh, I had some extra stuff on my brush there. <laughs> as I come down, I'm gonna be picking up a little bit more um, white <laughs> if I can get some clean white and my light yellow and I'm going to be more speckling it coming down in through here just so I can really take on the appearance of um, the reflection in the water especially in through here I've got lots of shiny white little speckles in through here and I do again need it to kind of um, blend with the stuff that's near it so in you don't necessarily just want to have um, white speckles going down in a single line here. You want to make sure they kind of blend out into the neighboring area. So when you have remnants on your brush, just a little tiny bit of um, the, that paint left, then you can just kind of start dotting it or dabbing it to the left or the right, and that will help you to just have it concentrated here and then blending it out towards that left and right. That's looking pretty good. I feel like I need a little bit more shiny stuff in through here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more dirty white and uh, try not to pick up too much blue. <laughs> Hold on, I need to wash my brush. I just picked up a whole bunch of blue. <laughs> um, so uh, the I don't really want too much more of that light yellow. So I'm going to go white plus a little bit of my gray um, to give myself some, some additional sparkles in through here. And again, you might find as if you're using this same photo reference that I'm using, that may, maybe you see different tones and different colors as you're going through the process. And if that's the case, then by all means, go with what you're seeing. You don't have to go with what I feel that I'm seeing. Um, that's the beautiful part about painting is y you can interpret that visual 
reference in whatever way you want to. If you feel that you want to go hyper realistic and make it look exactly as that photo, then yeah, study those colors and make sure that you're, you're emulating it the way that you, you feel is really purposeful and, and accurate to, to that photo reference. But if you want to just explore your your painterly eye and say oh i feel like i'm seeing you know green over there then put green over there if you feel like you're seeing red over there then put red over there that's you know what brings it into um its painterly place and makes it your painting and and not uh, necessarily a, a reproduction of somebody else's painting and you can see right now I'm just speckling I'm using I'm seeing lots of little twinkles in the water in the in the photo so I'm using my, that to um, help steer me in this direction of um, adding the this uh, dimensional textural type of effect into the water. So lots of stippling right now. I'm trying to um, keep a lot of the dark marks so that way it, uh, so I'm not painting over the whole thing, which is why I'm just kind of dotting it at this point. Every now and again, maybe I, I pull my brush just a little bit more so it looks like a more of a wave instead of a, of a little sparkly mark. Um, as it comes down towards the bottom, it looks like there's more gaps between the light and the dark. And then as I come over here where I'm seeing it's going towards that center of the canvas, this is now where I'm going to definitely um, go with, I'm seeing more of the direction of the wave. So this is where I started it with um, those diagonal kind of lines. So I'm going to continue on that, that idea with my brush stroke as I'm going through this and through here. So I'm gonna, um, I still, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that light gray as I'm coming over here. Still lots of little sparkles I'm seeing over in through here. I'm gonna have to transition into my blues in a minute, but I just, I'm feeling like I'm still seeing um, the, the, um, direction of the waves. I guess I'm going into blue now because I just picked it up. <laughs> I just picked up a little bit on my brush. But um, so I'm definitely seeing these little directional waves right around where that where we're going to be placing the um, lighthouse. So I just keep picking up light tones. Um, and that's what's going to allow me because we started with such a dark base. This is what's allowing me to um, build my way to a believable place of these of these ripply waves. So just bringing this over in through here. We've got some coming down in through here in this direction. So this goes in this direction in through here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my brush kind of in a um, wiggly to the right kind of way on these lighter areas that um, I had already made light. This is gonna help just give me the essence of these little um, directional waves in through here and same thing up in through here. So again, I'm just trying to emulate the, um, the texture of those waves and you can see I'm using different br directional brush strokes in order to get that. There's a big light spot right behind um, where the lighthouse is gonna go so we'll be able to um, um, add a shadow and stuff behind that but now I'm going to pick up my uh, teal plus a little bit of white on my dirty brush just to get myself just a little bit more um, I have a little bit of yellow on my brush too <laughs> a little bit more definition in these guys over in through here and you might find that this brush is a little bit too big for you to um, accomplish the details that that are comfortable to you and if that's the case then by all means switch to the smaller um, bristle brush that'll get you the same type of effect but maybe in a little bit more of a controlled um, manner um, and again and as I'm doing this I'm leaving some of that dark color of the uh, base tone that we had put on there before because that's where we're gonna be able to see all of that dimensional element. If you just col cover over or color over the whole thing, you'll miss out on those effects. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I might fiddle with it a little bit more. I left this dark area, that's where our um, 
our lighthouse is going to be going. We're going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put uh, this larger brush away, take out some kind of drawing utensil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our objects. So that's going to be the lighthouse, the um, walkway to the lighthouse, as well as the back land area. I'm using my white piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and we're going to connect those markers. We're going to make some basic shapes and by the time we're done, we'll have something that we'll, that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. We're not going to be going for any fine-tuned detail. I just really want to place these objects so we know where we're headed during the painting process. So I'm going to start for, uh, I'm going to start with the piece of land which is going to be on the right hand side of my horizon line. So if I find myself the center of my horizon left to right, this is about the center for me. I'm going to go about halfway between that and the end. So somewhere in this vicinity is where that land is going to just kind of poke up out from the horizon line. It crosses just a tiny bit over the horizon line, so it almost looks like there's a little bit of water going on the other side of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take, so it's only about a quarter of an inch tall on this end. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from here and just make myself a little kind of um, rigid type of line going all the way to um, the end of my canvas. Maybe it goes up a little bit on this right hand side, but not a whole heck of a lot. And then you can just draw um, a horizontal line at the bottom of it, taking you all the way to the end of the canvas. The walkway that brings you to the lighthouse kind of, it starts in the land and then disconnects. So there's a little area of water between the land and the walkway. So I would say if you, if you take from this edge over here and just kind of slowly disconnect yourself from that building, you'll get yourself a little skinny line that will be a little bit away from the edge of the building and or the edge of the, <laughs> the building, the um, land, and you'll be able to have a little bit of a sliver of um, that water in between. If you can't do it, no worries. We can accomplish it during the painting process. And I'm gonna do a horizontal line that's gonna go just past where my halfway mark is. So if this is my halfway mark, I'm gonna go about an inch and a half past that, a little bit below my horizon line somewhere here. So I'm just gonna take this and finish connecting it to here. So then what I'm gonna do is this is gonna round in a diagonal way down towards my uh, lighthouse. But before I finish that, I want, I'm gonna put my lighthouse in place first and then we'll go ahead and finish um, that. So my lighthouse is gonna, the top of it kind of crosses over the horizon line, but we can put that little detailed topper on later. We're just gonna put the main um, shape of the building on right now. So from this corner of the, uh, of the land, if I come down about a half of an inch into my water and over to the left about a quarter of an inch, that'll give me my first marker. Then I'm going to go to the left of that about almost maybe half to three quarters of an inch. It's not very wide at all. And then I'm going to come down maybe about two inches and about another two inches and just make myself a, a little rectangle type of a shape like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just chalk. It'll, it'll, we can modify it during the painting and process. We don't have to do anything perfect right now. I'm going to do another rectangle that's going to be a little bit wider than this one and maybe only, mm, I guess it's almost, it's a little bit more narrow than the width of the um, lighthouse. And then just make another rectangle like that. Then I'm going to um, this is the main area of the building. I need a platform for the building to, to um, sit on. So just below that, I'm going to make myself a horizontal line that goes a little bit farther over to the right, and then a little diagonal line like that, and a little bit farther over to the left, a little diagonal line like this. And then right, on, right about where this meets here, 
I'm going to do a horizontal line. So the corner of this platform is hidden behind the, um, the lighthouse. I'm going to do a little vertical line, a little vertical line, and a little vertical line like that. We're making the um, the rocks <laughs> that are below the um, the uh, lighthouse platform. So I can just bring this down in like a little jaggedy line like this to the right. It's going to come over in through here with a little jagged line. And then this is going to just kind of bump up like this. This is going to be all the little rocks that are meeting the water. And then this can kind of um, come down like this. So these will all be like little rocks. We're going to have a little um, cement. We'll put details on the building. Now I can go ahead and connect this main section to my walkway. Um, the walkway is going to be really narrow here and get wide as it comes towards here. And part of it is going to be rocks. Part of it is going to be the flat platform at the top. So I'm going to go about halfway between here and here, somewhere in this vicinity. I'm going to take from there and connect it to my line up there. And then I'm going to come down um, a little bit past this corner here, so somewhere in this vicinity, and then connect here to that marker up top. So something like this, like that. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. I'm going to be using my small brush for the next step, my small round brush, the number two. Sorry, I just kicked the camera a little bit too. Hopefully I didn't move it too much in a weird direction, but I'm gonna be using my number two round for the next step. So you can make any little adjustments you have to and get this out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our objects. I'm gonna be using my number two round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are dark gray, black, um, burnt sienna, light yellow, teal, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my dark gray for the land and the walkway. I'll use black for my, um, for my rocks. I'm going to use a cut, I'll use my light yellow plus, um, my burnt sienna for the cement. And then I'm going to use my, um, teal plus a little bit of white for the base coat for the building. So I'm going to start with my dark gray on my back land area. As I'm doing this, I'm just thinking, well, it's got um, little maybe either buildings or trees and stuff up at the top. So I'm just making it a little bit messy up at the top. I'm seeing in the photo reference that there's a couple of things that stick up. So I'm not quite sure what they are. They could be buildings, they could be trees. You can, if you can discern what they are, absolutely paint them in whatever way that you'd like. I'm just doing little um, marks, bumping them up here and there. And I'll put a little bit more detail in it on my second go around. But right now, just getting a flat coat on here that will um, start the process. And if you st still see, Oh, I don't need to wash my brush. If you're still seeing a little bit of your chalk, that's fine. I tend to do that because I like to keep myself in check and not um, go outside of my line. So sometimes I leave that chalk there until it's absolutely necessary to get rid of it. So my walkway, um, I'm going to put just a little bit of water on my brush because it's really tiny back in through here. So just a little bit. And if your water is not darker than your walkway, you can... Um, put a tiny bit of black on your brush with your, um, I just picked up a tiny bit of black too, with your dark gray so you can see it a little bit better. That's, and I'm actually going to um, end up on my final uh, pass, pull this light blue up. Um, I want that to be lighter right next to the, um, right next to the walkway. So if yours is disconnected like mine is, no worries. We'll, we'll hit that when we do our final little pass. But right now I'm just picking up my dark gray plus a little bit of black plus water on my brush so I can get a nice skinny or s attempt to get a nice skinny line back in through here. It's far away so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it is on the more narrow side, the farther away that it is. And then as it comes closer to the viewer, this is going to get um, wider and wider, which is why 
this area in three and that that light or that dark gray is just too light for me so I'm gonna I'm mixing it with a little bit of black as well on this area I thought it was gonna be dark enough but it's not dark enough for me so I just added a little bit of extra black to it and it's also this bottom edge of this is going to be um, some rock stuff as well so right now just kind of getting the this base coat on here and we'll we'll put little details on it on the next step so don't worry about this bottom um, section or any of it looking too perfect right now um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some black to get these uh, little rocks started and I'm just going to make them jagged or a uh, little kind of jutting out as they meet the water in some areas. And again, when we go to do our little details, we'll put some little highlights and stuff. So that way uh, you'll be able to uh, see the difference between the rocks so they have some dimension. Right in through here, this left side of the wall is kind of rocks and... Um, like light rocks and dark rocks so I'm just going to kind of leave a couple little spaces in through there we're going to see some of the cement on this back side um, and getting this little bumpy area let's see this is a little rock there a bigger rock here and a bigger rock there there we go <laughs> and then and there's going to be a shadow and, and a reflection of the um, building in the water that we'll do too I'm going to wash and dry my brush now I'm going to do the platform. I'm going to do this with my light yellow and a bit of burnt sienna on my brush because it appears as if it's got a little bit different tone to it being in the sunlight and of course the second layer will make it look much better but this is just going to give us some some place to start um, on this back side where it's going to hit the um, the back edge again just kind of using those two colors i'm going to leave a little um, evidence of my chalk mark there so where uh, the edge of the of the platform is and the corner right here so that way as i go through the process i i won't lose where i wanted that exterior um, lip or edge of the platform to be wash and dry my brush i'm going to pick up some of my teal plus a little bit of white and i'm going to color the builder the building in with these two colors. So this is gonna have windows and there's gonna be a little roof topper things. All I'm looking to do right now is give myself a base coat. So in the picture, it does appear, I might go a little bit darker than this. I think I'm gonna go more teal on this. It, it's pretty dark. I, in the picture, it appears to be darker than the water. So if you're going through yours you and yours is, um, is lighter than the water you could either lighten up the water or darken up the um, the lighthouse itself you'll see the lighthouse even better once we start putting the details on it um, and again right now I'm just doing a real basic shape for it as I go to do the details I will uh, I will finesse the shape of this a little bit more so we can have sides to it and a topper and windows and all that good stuff but right now it's super basic <laughs> so once we've got this done we're going to use this same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do next is we're going to finish this little back land area I'm going to use my small brush I'm going to be using teal white dark gray and black and if I use any other colors I'll let you know so first what I'm going to do is make sure that my water line meets up to my um, walkway so I'm going to pick up some teal and white on my brush and give myself a nice light area right up where it meets the um, the walkway so this is teal and white and just bringing it right up to the top and through there if you feel that it's too light or you know it's not blending well with the land below it you can always bring in some more of the um, of the teal for the water I, in the photo it looks like it's pretty darn light up in through here so I'm even I'm picking up even more 
white to get into this color right between the walkway and the land itself. And if your land is not popping out as much as you want to, you can always just either lighten or darken that, that water right around it. That's the biggest thing is just contrast. Contrast in your colors, either light or dark. The, the, um, the higher the contrast, the more those objects will pop out. I'm even going to put, um, as I have this on my brush, the lightness, I'm bringing it over in through here. I know I said I was going to do land, but I can't resist. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and my dark gray just to get a little bit of extra details in this building or in the, um, in the land. Just rubbing it around, not doing anything fancy, just kind of manipulating that around in through there. And now I'm going to, without washing my brush, just pick up a little bit of white to just kind of highlight little tips of that building. Uh, I keep calling it a building. Maybe it is a little city. I'm not quite sure what this is. It must be since I keep wanting to call it that. Um, let's see. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Um, I Maybe just a little bit more of my gray just to kind of, oh, and a little bit of white. Put a little bit of extra maybe information in through here. So I'm just feeling like I wanted a little bit more texture and stuff in that piece of land and making sure that I finesse that area right by the um, the walkway so you can, it really pops out and pick up a little bit more teal. Just get this a little bit darker in through here and that'll get it to um to pop more as well maybe just a little bit more white on my brush there we go and i can certainly just kind of blend that out with these guys in through here and then that's all i'm going to do for that once you've got this done you can um we're going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just keep fiddling with this over here so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the walkway, the rocks, and the reflection of the um, lighthouse and any little ripply wave stuff around the, the rocks too. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to be using black, burnt sienna, um, white, and... That might be it. Oh, I might work. I might do a little bit on this platform too. So I'll call out, oh, and my teal. I'll call out the colors as I use them. So I'm going to start with my walkway. I'm going to start with a little bit of um, watered down black paint on my brush just to really kind of uh, make a little bit of a shadow on this back side, clean it up a little bit. You don't have to go as dark as I'm going. You could probably just get away with. Um, you know it with the dark gray but there's some areas that I feel I just wanted to be a little bit darker so it popped out a little bit more and as I come around this corner in through here this is where I can start to with this watered down black on my brush I can start to put the illusion or essence of these little um, it looks like there's little pylon like stones or something in this area in through here to um, hold up the walkway <laughs> and then there's a couple of little uh, rocks or something looks like jutting out I just picked up a little bit more uh, black and gray I would say somewhere maybe in through here there's a little um, I don't know rock looks like in through here and a couple of little ones in through here these might they might be rocks they might be sand not quite sure but just putting them in there <laughs> that looks good uh, and I feel like there's a couple of little um, almost seams or something in, in this uh, top part. I'm sure this is all little stones as well. I've never been to this place, but it looks super cool and some, somewhere where I would like to go. So I'm studying these little rocks here. So it looks like there's, again, those little pylon things that works in through there. I'm going to, um, I'm going to pick up. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure what I said I was going to use, but I'm picking up light gray and burnt sienna right now. So light gray and burnt sienna. I'm going to put a couple of little, a um, little bit of white too. Uh, a couple of little light spots on this top part. 
feel like I need some of that light yellow too. <laughs> All kinds of colors I'm using right now just to give myself a touch of um, a light gray is going back on my brush a touch of highlight on this top but I don't want it to go super duper light because I don't want to lose the definition between it and the water so if you're if you're going about it and and it gets I just picked up a little bit of uh, black with my light gray to get this edge over here to be finished um, if you're going about it and you're not able to see it as well as you thought you should or wanted to, it just means that the colors next to it need to be lighter or darker in order to be able to see it better. So I'm just kind of using stone type of colors to get that top to, um, to be more visible. And if I needed to, I could put lighter water next to it. So I think that's what I'm going to opt to do. I just picked up a little bit of white paint. Um, right here, I'm going to put more white uh, in that water in through here as well as down this side in through here. So little little extra sparkles in the water will get that um, will get that area of the walkway to pop out a little bit more. So again, just little contrast in those colors. So if you did it on one side, just do, do it on the other side as well um, because maybe that water is more shallow in that area maybe it's sparkling a little bit more i feel like there would definitely be um there's some, some little sparkles in the water as it's hitting these rocks in through here so i'm going to go ahead and put little sparkles there that makes that pop out nice i'm gonna um i'm gonna amp up the top of that platform too i've got my dirty brush i'm gonna pick up a little bit of that light yellow plus burnt sienna so it's white light yellow and burnt sienna just getting this a little bit lighter and again not trying to make it um a hundred percent white or um too defined just kind of giving myself a little um extra texture up in through there this back side is pretty good i don't really need to do anything there i might just pick up a little bit of my dark gray just to make this look like it's the back side that looks fine. And then the rocks, I'm just going to play with a little bit lighter tones. So I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and my dark gray. And I can just kind of add these little bits of um, shiny spots on the rocks. So that'll make them look like uh, there's some spots that are being hit by the sun. Again, you don't really have to do a whole heck of a lot in order to get the information to translate. Picking up a little bit more uh, black just to make sure I've got um, these little spots in through here that looks fine to me I'm just using my dirty brush with the um, burnt sienna and a little bit of white just to tell the story in through there I think I want a little bit more back in through here just to um, kind of close this off like that just making sure I can't see any of my water underneath there and just picking up a little bit more of my burnt sienna and gray um, now i'm going to pick up a little bit of my teal and white so teal and white oh and burnt sienna burnt sienna teal and white is going to give me little ripples in my water in through here just as they're crashing into that that little wave um, or the little rocks around here. So these are just tiny little burnt sienna, white and teal. That works for me there. And back in through here, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. Right behind the, um, the rocks, I'm gonna have a reflection of this, which is gonna be very faint. So I'm gonna pick up teal plus a tiny bit of black paint. So teal plus a tiny bit of black paint. And I'm gonna go right in through here just darkening this water right as it's hitting those rocks and then without washing my brush just picking up some teal and this is just it's it's a very very subtle reflection slash shadow i'm thinking of the um of the lighthouse so i'm just going to kind of bring this into the water just a little bit like this and if you wanted it to be more evident feel free i just it, as i'm looking at this photo it's very very subtle but it's it's definitely there so 
I, I wanted to just kind of make sure that at least there was a little bit of darkness in, in, the, in the water in this area to kind of um, to speak to that. And it might be a little bit more right than that. So let's just put it a little bit more to the right. Something like this. And again, it's super subtle. So I'm not terribly concerned about that going uh, perfect. And then if you needed to connect these waves anymore in through here, I just picked up a little bit more of my um, my teal plus my white. And if you felt like I feel this is kind of disconnected from that. So I'm just going to kind of manipulate this a little bit, add a little bit more into these uh, little waves. I keep adding a bit of water onto my brush just to kind of connect these colors and make sure that they talk well to each other. Because that's, that's my thing. I like my colors to talk to each other. <laughs> so something like this will work for me. And if you felt that you needed to uh, energize any of these waves back in through here, especially around this little corner, this is going to be a little bit more uh, lightness for me around this corner in through here. And then anything to, you know, kind of amp up or, or make sure that you've got those little waves the way that you want. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got these areas as muchly done as you want them to be, um, maybe just a little bit more white on my brush. Once you've got them done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish the lighthouse. I'm using my small round brush. The colors I'm using are white, black, my teal, uh, that might be it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, clean up my uh, my lighthouse. I'm, I'm gonna be putting a little fence around it too. So we'll be using black for that, I think. Um, so I'm gonna be cleaning up the edges of my lighthouse. I'm gonna be putting in some of the um, arch architectural elements like the windows. There's some kind of decorative striped coloring um, throughout this top main portion. There's a little platform or balcony from this layer to this layer of the building. There's a, a lookout area at the top and then there's a top area where I imagine the light goes. <laughs> it's, it's a lighthouse. <laughs> so, and we'll put a little fence around. I'm going to be uh, using the small brush. I'm going to start with white, or excuse me, water and black paint and very thinned out black paint, like an ink consistency. So I just kind of keep adding little drops of water into it until it's very, very thin, almost like ink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some stripes around my, um, my lighthouse. So I'm gonna take down this um, left-hand side, just give myself a nice kind of clean outline right down. Oh, my eyes are like, thinking that this is too close for me. <laughs> so I'm going to just go right uh, down this left hand side. My eyes had to focus there for a second. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side. So just bringing this out and giving myself a nice clean little edge down the side of that. There is um, a little top to it. So I'm going to just close this off from here to here. And it appears as if there's a, there's a curt, like this is a circular type of um, house. So I'm going to just curve these lines, just a smudge, not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down um, one, two, three, four uh, thin lines uh, coming from here. And they're going to stop maybe... Um, a little bit, I would say maybe a quarter of an inch um, before I reach uh, this bottom tier or where I stop or where I brought, brought these black lines to. So that's one. I'm going to have to count out loud here. <laughs> and I probably can't talk when I'm doing them too. And I do have a sh super shaky hand. So right now my hand is resting on my um, canvas to prevent me from going too, too um, shaky. 
and I just kind of pull my hand down. The water on my brush helps to give me a long slender line. Um, so that helps a lot when I'm doing these uh, small detail straight lines. So like that. Now I'm gonna put some windows in and I'm just watching how the, um, how the photo has them. So these are just itty bitty. So I'm gonna have, I have two in through here. So uh, one, two, and I love to count when I paint some. <laughs> There's one, uh, all four of these slots have windows. These ones look a bit wider than um, the more narrow ones I'm gonna do in a minute. I need more paint on my brush though. So I've, I, my paint is almost too watered down for these thicker lines because I can see right through it. So I just picked up a little bit thicker um, black paint so that way I could get a more solid line. And then it looks like these two have similar height windows as that one. So I'm gonna just kind of put them in place like this and then I can finesse them a little bit if I and then same height as that one down there uh, and this is super tiny details so I'm just going for representational I'm not going for um, you know photo realistic here just representational is all I need to do here <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do there's some um, there's a platform right in through here so I'm gonna take um, where I have this edge of the blue here I'm going to go a little bit, um, well, maybe just right to the top of it. I just want to give myself a little black edge in through here, kind of a little curved, just a smudge curved, knowing that it probably curves around the building like this. I'm just putting, I'm going to actually put this lighter in a minute, but picture it to just wrap in front of that building like that. Um, there's also a shadow underneath the building. so some or uh, on this back side so go right down to the bottom here put this black line and then i'm going to put a little bit more water on my brush and give myself a shadow right behind here just to the edge of that platform so something like this will will do that for me so a little bit of a shadow down and through there i'm just looking to see where else is there going to be some black stuff on here um we've got some other light areas um, in through like the top here and over here but there, I got a couple of dark things that I'm seeing there's a little um, looks like something on the platform in through here there's going to be um, it looks like the edge of this in through here is a little bit darker there's going to be um, some stuff back in through here there is a fence I'm going to put in a second, but I think that's good for the for the dark stuff down here. I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush. I do have a, a the, the topper that I want to put on, but before I do that, I'm going to just finish up this platform part in through here. I'm actually going to pick up um, some of my light gray to get this edge, the front edge of this platform light. So this is just light gray like that. And then I'm going to just blend it into this back with my dark blue. So just kind of, um, so I have some kind of transition from the front to the back. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to just pick up some of my um, teal. I might have said blue here, but it was my teal. I just picked up my teal plus a little bit of white. There's some kind of light area in through here. I don't know if it's a, it's a piece of the building or a sign or something, so I'm just putting um, teal plus a little bit of white in this rectangular type of a shape. There's a couple of little areas up in through these windows or up in the side of this building that have a couple of little light streaks, so I'm just kind of dabbling that in. There's a real light area on the side of the building right in through here, so this is going to go more white with just a tiny bit of the teal. Um, in through here just so I can get this highlight on the side of the building in through here. That looks pretty good. So I think that that looks um, pretty good. Uh, wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit of that watered down black. There's a couple of, um, I don't know if they're windows back here or not. So I'm just making the little marks as I see them. That looks pretty good. 
a little bit something in through there. That looks good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the topper on and then we'll come back and put all the little um, details along the edge of the um, platform. So wash and dry my brush, just picking up some watered down black paint. I have, um, let's see, we're going to do the, the uh, exterior edges of where the light goes. So I'm just going to make this kind of um, rectangular type of shape right in through here and then on the top it's kind of a triangle so i'm gonna and it crosses over into the horizon so i'm gonna put a little triangle right in through uh, actually it meets right up with this walkway so we're gonna put it right at the walkway as as it is in the picture and it's a little triangle like this and you can, if you want to see it more, you can bring it down just past that, that triangle or the, uh, the walkway. And then there's a little ball at the top of it, just a tiny little ball like that. And then there's a, um, looks to be a little, um, probably an area for the housing of the light somewhere in through here. So just a solid black in through there. And then there looks like there's some kind of a fence of sorts around here. So I'm going to just make these really skinny lines if my hand is going to cooperate here. Something like that. And again, I'm just using my watered down black paint. So this is a little bit more narrow than the width of the building. So I've got that in through there. And then I'm just going to make a whole bunch of little crisscrossy type of um, marks just to make it look like there's something in through there. And then the light part itself, I'm going to use black, a little black grid, but then I'm going to um, put some white highlights in it. So it looks like there's um, just a diagonal type of a grid like this. And then I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I'll come back and put a little highlight on it. I'm going to put a little bit thicker black paint in through here just so we can see that a little bit better there we go so while that's drying i'll come back in a minute and put a highlight on that but while that's drying i'm going to come down and do my tiny fence around my um around the lighthouse so it looks like it's coming uh, i would say uh somewhere in through here and it's just a little protective fence around the lighthouse somewhere in through here and I you know when I do this stuff again it's it's a matter of how far do I want to take it what is coming out um, over on this corner here how um, much detail do I want to paint <laughs> so you have to make those determining factors yourself um, I'm gonna just kind of bring this across I'm not again doing it exactly as it is in the picture just something similar that that feeds my painterly eye this will go over here and then it's just a bunch of uh, vertical lines at this point just little tiny thin vertical lines you could certainly switch your brush too if this brush was um, too wide for you you could use a much smaller detail brush if you want to but I'm just using um, the watered down black paint so I can get the more narrow lines and I can um, have the fluidity in it. I feel like I need to um, just get the edge of this platform a little bit more visible. So just kind of darkening that a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going back up to the um, to the to where the light is and I'm putting white on my brush. I'm gonna go right next to that black and put some bright white maybe pop a couple of bright sparkles of white in there a little white edge because we got a bright light in that sky so i can even put a little white right next to this black edge of the building that'll get that to pop out even more and then if i felt that it would benefit me i could put a little white at the edge of the um this main platform in through here just to show the effects of the sun. You could even put 
tiny sparkles of white on that top of that fence if you wanted to. So wherever you wanted it to look like there's a little sparkle from that um, from the light source, you just put these little tiny white dots and that's going to tell the story right away what's getting affected by, by the sun. And sometimes it just really helps to amp that up and give you a little bit more um, definition in, in everything that you've done. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can uh, wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm using my number two round brush. I think I'm going to go bottom left on this one with um, some watered down black paint. <laughs> I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or you could use a date, you could make a special symbol, whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very tranquil nautical scene and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.